Hello there, Ray here, and today guys, we'll be looking at why these 10 things were not added into 1.18 and when they will be coming. Leave a like and let's get right into it. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Warden. This was a new mob that was showcased in the 1.17 sneak peek in the Minecraft live event. It was a massive mob towering over top of iron golems, and it spawns in the deep dark biome, where it would emerge from the floor if too many skulk shriekers went off. But as we now know, in 1.17, the deep dark biomes weren't added, and they also weren't added in 1.18. 18. These new biomes were supposed to rarely spawn at the deepest depths of the world, and they weren't going to contain any water or lava aquifers. And this biome was mostly supposed to be underneath the mountains or continental areas. But these biomes will generate between Y level negative 1 all the way down to negative 64, where currently there's all that deep slate. But this biome has a unique property very similar to Mushroom Islands, where no other hostile mobs can spawn there beside the Warden. It's also the place that contains the Skulk related blocks and the ancient cities. These ancient cities are structures that you can find generated in the deep dark. They're built out of variations of the deep slate blocks. There's also some basalt, planks, and even wool. They're also not completely void of light, but they're being soul sand and the soul fires and soul lanterns. We also see candles and skeleton skulls scattered about. The chests within these ancient cities will have unique loot of how special abilities that no other item in the game will have. The city itself is quite open with different levels. The most fascinating thing that's in it is the deep slate frames. This almost looks like some kind of portal looking over the entire city area. It's possible that these frames can be lit somehow and takes us to a new dimension that will be coming out in a future update. But as we know, none of this stuff actually came out in 1.17 or 1.18. And the reason why is because they wanted to really expand on the whole deep dark, warden, ancient city, and skulk features that are coming with it. And as we know, 1.17 was missing a lot of the things that initially proposed. And instead, it mostly came out to be a lot of different new blocks and items. Or 1.18 actually came out with the new mountains and caves that we were expecting, but was missing the whole warden part. And because 1.18 was kind of the finish up of 1.17, they didn't want to drag it out really long. So they came out with 1.18 fairly fast, and they just focused on the actual world generation parts. Now with the rest of the stuff coming in 1.19, it gives them a lot more time to expand on this and give it all some really cool dynamic features. We're already getting some sneak peeks of what 1.19 would look like with the betas in the Bedrock Edition, but we already know a lot of cool things about the warning even though it's not out yet. Like it's completely blind, but it'll actually use a smell to get close to a player, even if the player's not making any noise. Otherwise it will use the different vibrations that the player puts off to home on the player's location. But it can get confused by other vibrations put on by like mobs or like throwing projectiles that hit other things. It follows the same rules as like the skulk sensor when it detects vibration. But like walking on wool is one way to avoid it. The antennas on the warden are very similar to the skulk sensor too and will even change color once it detects them. And because of this ability it's able to actually detect invisible mobs. Once it does locate the player's location, it doesn't matter what the player does, it's coming after it. And its attacks are quite brutal, doing 32 damage. It's also designed to be strong with 500 health and it cannot be knocked backwards, similar to iron gold. It's also designed to be extremely difficult so players will try to avoid it and they're given a special ability so people can't just easily tower upwards but the solution does not include it breaking blocks around it when killed it might give off a item that's kind of like a trophy but not like a useful one, as the warden is supposed to be just really annoying. But the warden wasn't the only thing that was shown for 1 to 18, but wasn't delivered. Let's take a look at the mysteries behind the goat horn. The goat horn was an item that was added into the beta of the bedrock edition back in October of 2020. But with the 1.17 update, goats were added, and you can actually breed them using wheat, and you're able to milk them, and you're able to use like leaves of them, and killing a goat only drops some XP orbs, but no horns or meat. But despite these guys having horns on their head, they're there was no horn item in the game and they showed that if the goat would run into some blocks it would break off one of its horns and it would drop as an item and this can be done up to two times per goat at which point the goat would have no more horns and couldn't drop anymore but goats don't drop their horns in the current experimental beta but the goat horn can be found in the creative menu and if you go ahead and hold this in your hand and then you just hold down right click button it looks like your player is kind of like eating it but if you continue to hold it it plays the raid noise when it villages under siege. Currently, it really doesn't have a use, but maybe it will be used to call the raiders to you rather than the village that they're trying to go towards. The horn does produce noise, and as we know, the noise is what the warden uses to detect stuff, so maybe this will distract the warden in some way. It'd also be cool if you can actually turn this horn into like a viking helmet, but the developers did put out a message saying why they didn't add the horn so far. They said the current use that they want to use it for really doesn't fit in the current updates that they got going on. But they do plan on adding it into a update that is coming sometime after 1.19. And they said that the horn will have some unique special uses then. We actually know that Minecraft's next few updates are actually already planned out. So they kind of have ideas of what items will fit into which ones. Feel like you're becoming smarter? Hit the red button and the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. 
The bundle was another item that was showcased in the Caves and Cliffs update, but never came. It has a lot of unique properties like being able to hold 64 unique items in a single slot, but it has the downside of only being able to hold one non-snackable item inside since it has a value of 64. The recipe was supposed to be 6 rabbit hides with 2 string, but the recipe was removed from the game. You can still get yourself this bundle by using the gift command, and you can easily put items in by just holding the item over top of it and right clicking it to put it inside, or you can hold the bundle over top of an item and right click it to put it inside. But if you right click it with an empty hand, it's going to take out the last item. Or if you hover over top of an empty slot and right click, it's going to take out the last item. But the item currently doesn't seem to have its full potential. There's some weird stuff like you can put bundles inside of bundles. And then when you open up that bundle, it drops a bundle. And you can just keep putting bundles inside of bundles, kind of like Russian nesting dolls. And despite bundles only stacking in sets of one, you can actually use commands to put a stack of 16 inside of a bundle, which makes it seem like it can stack up to 16. Players have complained that it doesn't hold enough items, especially when it comes to stackable items. And after you get all these items inside, getting the item out that you want is really difficult. Because you either end up just getting the ones that are at the very top, or you can hold it and just right click it, which will drop all the items from it. But then you have to try to put them all back in, except for the one that you want to keep. It's definitely a very exciting item, but the developers said that they do want to flesh it out more and add more features. One way this can be done is when you right click it to have items go inside, I'll put it in the first slot, but then when you right click again, it'll take stuff out of the last slot. Or they can add in unique features where right clicking with an empty hand is different than right clicking over top of an empty slot in your inventory. People have also suggested that maybe you could just aim at different items on the ground and then you could right click them to automatically put them into the bundle. That way you can completely avoid the whole inventory management problem. It might also be cool if you could put them inside like dispensers and when you use this it would drop out all their items and keep the bundle inside. That way you can use it more automatically. Another cool feature might be if you have items inside of it and you right click it will immediately place it as a block if it can but it will choose randomly from within the item slots. That way you could kind of use different bundles to put down random vegetation. So like a randomizer when you're building. Now they did say the bundle will eventually come out to survival, but they really want to take time to make sure it works properly. Now it is supposed to be an early game item that's not supposed to solve the entire inventory management problem with there being so many items in the game and so little space in the player's inventory. So giving this item feature of being able to just hover top of it and then just directly click into this menu to grab exactly what item you want is probably too overpowered for such a cheap item. Shulker boxes are more expensive and they still don't have this feature. What cool features do you think bundles should have? Archaeology was another thing announced for the Caves and Cliffs update. It's supposed to have these dig sites where players can use brushes to sweep off dirt and grub in order to discover artifacts. This include precious blocks, but also ceramic shards. These shards could be put onto a new clay pot and fired up to make a painted clay pot. Although they did put a lot of work into archaeology so far, it didn't really fit into the Caves and Cliffs. So instead, it's being moved into a future update. It's not going to be 1.19, but something beyond that. They did try to make archaeology Minecrafty, but give a deeper look into the history of Minecraft and the lore behind it, while still allowing players to make their own lore for the game. But more recently, there were three things that were actually in the 1.18 snapshots, but never made it into the full release. The first one being that Lightrus could glide without taking durability, and only would take durability when using a rocket to boost. This made strategies like boosting straight up and then gliding very effective in making your Lightrus last longer. But with it came a nerf where each firework boost would make the player go twice 6 blocks per second rather than 30. Most players were accepting of the durability change, but not of the rocket change. Now the idea behind nerfing the rockets is that because of 1 to 18, it is much slower on servers for new chunks to be generated. So they don't want people to just use your Lytra to zip through chunks, bring it down the performance of servers. All the changes were then reverted back in an upcoming experimental snapshot. The reason this never made it to the 1 to 8 full release is that they wanted to come out with 1 to 18 relatively soon and it felt like this was a feature they needed to think about more before just releasing to everybody. The next one would have some fairly big impacts. This one would have changed the way that mobs would spawn into the game. In Java, they spawn from the bottom of the world going upwards. So if you make farms where mobs naturally spawn inside them and then you kill them, you'd want them to spawn in again fast. For this reason, the lower you build your farm, the faster it would spawn in mobs. And in an early 1.18 snapshot, they came out so that instead of mobs spawning being faster towards the bottom and very slow at the very top of the world, they made it so it was the same speed no matter where in the world the mob spawned. And the speed in which they would come into the world would be equivalent to Y level 64 or C level in version 1.17. Most people build their mob farms at the surface of the game, so with this change, it would increase the loop by quite a bit. A farm like my simple witch farm using Hoglands would produce 3,600 items per hour, a 14% increase. And this had a really big effect on farms in the nether dimension because of the bedrock ceiling at 128, which is double the height of C level in the overworld. And the speed of mob spawning is based off of the tallest block, so 
So farms in the nether were typically always a little bit slower despite them being built below the bedrock. So this change would have really helped over there where my simple wither skeleton farm would produce 1,200 coal alone which is a 43% increase. And my simple pigment farm that produces XP's gold and bartering loot would have got a 51% increase producing almost 120,000 items per hour. But once again this did not make it into 1 to 18 as they didn't want to force us onto players with not enough time to really fully test this. Keep in mind that during this time they were working really hard to fix all the technical things to do with 1 to 18 having deeper caves and taller mountains. But because they didn't come out with this change and they did increase the depth of the world, it turns out farms got even slower than 1.17. A general mob farm producing over 15,000 items per hour in 1.17 now produces less than 10,000. This change would come with some downside, such as farms that take advantage of being really fast at the bottom of the world, such as like an enderman farm, would have became slower. Or if you would have put your farm down low and removed the blocks above it in the overworld, you would also see your rates go down, despite the work you did to remove the blocks above it. Keep in mind that actual perimeter where you dig the blocks all around the farm down low don't actually help the farm out. It is typically just done for looks or as a fun way to spawn proof the area. But there is other ways to easily spawn proof stuff which I use in my simple farms. Now they did say that this change may come in the future when they have a little more time to work on it and get feedback from the players. Overall this is a pretty exciting change as most players build their farms at sea level and this would actually help them. Plus this will also get us closer to a parity with bedrock edition as mod spawning is different over there. The third thing in 1 to 18 snapshots and made to full release was a short lived change where they had zombies not spawn inside of dripstone caves. This is the same time where they added in so drowns could actually spawn in there. Maybe they thought since drowns spawn there then zombies don't have to or maybe they're just trying to equal out the mob spawning ratios. But either way in the next snapshot they reverted this change so now zombies can spawn there as well as drowns. The next two we're going to take a look at are kind of strange things. The first one is that when azaleas were added into 1.17, they didn't come with a new wood type. Instead, they're just using the oak wood. In the past, when dark oak trees were added, as well as acacias, they were temporarily given other wood type, such as jungle trees, during the snapshots when they were being worked on. But when the full release came on those blocks, they came out with the new wood types, but this did not happen for the azalea tree. To this day, it still has oak. Maybe because azalea kind of has similar wood type, as well as textures as the current ones, azalea in real life is very spindly, and it's a bit hard to describe exactly how it looks. There is mods that come out with azalea wood, in which case they make it kind of a purple color. Currently there is a lot of different types of wood already. Maybe they just didn't want to have more variation. And if it was added, they would also have to add the log types, the stripped variations, the wood variations, the stripped wood variations, the slabs, the stairs, which is quite a bit. Do you think azalea should have their own wood type? And if so, what should it have looked like? This next one goes out to all your bedrock edition players. It has to do with Shulker's ability to split, actually making Shulker shell farms possible in the Java edition. As you guys know, I designed about 20 different types of Shulker shell farms, and my most recent design is probably the one that is most used in Minecraft. But I get tons of comments saying, why doesn't this work in bedrock edition? And that's because you guys don't actually get the Shulker splitting yet in the game. It wasn't added in 1.17, and they said like it was going to come to Bedrock Edition, but it wasn't even added into 1.18 for the Bedrock Edition. But there has been no word on exactly when it will come for Bedrock. Hopefully it will come pretty soon for you guys because this farm is amazing producing hundreds of shulker shells per hour all automatically inside your spawn checks or even 24 7 on servers. Now check out this playlist to see how I designed a farm for every item in the game in Minecraft or this one where I show tricks I discovered over the last 12 years of playing this game. Guys you did it we reached 5,000 followers over at Twitter. Thank you everyone who followed and there's still time for the rest of you. I do occasionally post real life pictures over there and maybe you'll even get a glimpse of my dog and my cat. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.